I'm going to start a, a, a series that uh, it's going to sound a little awkward, but I'm going to talk about uh, tonight and next week the reality of heaven and hell. And the reason why I believe the Spirit of God, he spoke this to my heart. He says, I want you to teach on the reality of heaven and hell. And I thought, well, well, why? Because when you talk about hell, that is a message to unbelievers. And so I'm going to deal with hell tonight. <laughs> and just so, you, just so you can take good notes so you can minister to unbelievers. But this is not for you. Let me please make sure I, you understand something. If, if you have been born again and you, you have made Jesus the Lord of your life, you are heaven bound. You are heaven bound. But if you are not born again and you're not a believer, uh, listen very carefully tonight. We hope we can change your mind. Amen. And so, Father, we do praise you. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you that uh, these words will come out correctly with love. And we give you praise for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, as we begin, right before I get into this, let's, I want, I want to just show you, a lot of times people, you know, they come to the conclusion that certain things don't exist because it's not really kind of like preached about enough. And, it, you know, and when it's not ministered, it's not in a person's mind. And so they just kind of think it doesn't exist or they start listening to people who don't know what they're talking about and you absorb what they say. So before I really get started, I want to turn to the scriptures and I want to, I want to share some, some things with the scripture, show you some things in the scripture, just about some of the things it says. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13, 42. I want to look at six scriptures and then I'll get started. So remember, this is the reality of heaven and hell. And you're going to learn something about both existences, but you're going to be grateful that you made a decision to get born again. You have all life to make one decision, and that is the decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life. So this is a part of our understanding series, and certainly this is something that every new member needs to get a hold of. Matthew chapter 13, 42, and just listen how this goes, 13, 42. He says, and, and, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Uh, now, he's talking about, again, unbelievers. They'll be cast into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. It's very interesting. What do you do with that scripture? Do you tear it up and throw it away? Well, now let's go to this up next scripture I want you to see. Matthew 10, 28. Matthew 10 and 28. And these are just scriptures that you can use and, and look at. He says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both the soul and the body in hell. So here again, it makes reference to uh, hell. And, and for people who don't believe in it, 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 the scripture is very clear about making reference over and over again that there is a hell. We live in a generation now where they don't believe in the heaven or hell. So I want to take time to show you the, the reality of this. Look at 2 Peter chapter 2 and 4. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4. Now notice here he says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but he cast them, notice the direction, down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Now listen to what this scripture says. This scripture says, that God did not spare those angels that sinned. Those, you remember that whole war in heaven and those angels that rebelled against God? God did not spare those angels that sinned, but he cast them down to hell. You're going to find out that hell was not created for us. It was created for fallen angels. It was created for the devil and those fallen angels. But that was a place that was created for the rebellious angels. And Satan, of course, was an archangel. So every rebellious angel there was a place that was created for them. And he says, they were put in the chains of darkness, cast them down to hell. So it's a literal place. It's a literal place. It was not originally created for men. 
Let's go to Psalms 9, 17. Look at a couple more scriptures, and then we need to locate this. Psalms 9, verse 17. He says, the wicked shall be turned, where? Into hell. And all the nations that forget God will be turned into hell. But remember, the original purpose for it was not for mankind. Look at Mark chapter 9, verse 43. Mark chapter 9 and verse 43, he says, And if they, and if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. So there's, there's, there's too many references that are making reference to that place. And so let's, let's see if we can locate it. Ephesians chapter 4 and 9. Ephesians chapter 4 and 9. This is interesting. He says, now that he ascended, now referring to Jesus, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended? Remember, he sent the, those, uh, those angels down. He descended first, watch this, into the lower parts of the earth. So he just, you know, this scripture tells us that this is located in the lower parts of of the earth. It was created for all fallen angels and demonic forces, the lower parts of the earth. And of course, Jesus went to hell, the lower parts of the earth, for three days and three nights, okay? And the lower parts of the earth. So um, we know where it is. We know exactly where it is. It, it is in the lower parts of the earth or Hades. Now, what I'm about to show you is something in Luke chapter 16, which was an actual event that took place. Uh, go to Luke 16, and when you get to Luke 16, and this is where I want to spend the majority of my time tonight, Luke chapter 16, I just want to give you those scriptures. And one of the reasons why I, it's important for you to get these scriptures is because when it comes to heaven, most people believe in it. And most people believe that they're going there. <laughs> On the other hand, while some people believe in hell, most don't think they're going there. Now, you're, you're living in a very interesting time now. You're living in a very interesting time where there are people that don't believe in God. They don't believe in the devil. They don't believe in hell. They don't believe in heaven. And, you know, they can live like hellions and tell them, what do you think is going to go when you die? I'm going to heaven. <laughs> well, is Jesus the Lord of your life? Who? <laughs> it's not going to happen. All right, so let's look at this real carefully. Luke 16, uh, and let's begin at verse um, 19. Luke 16 and verse 19. Are you there? All right, now let's, let's break this down. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he fared sumptuously. Now, the first thing that got my attention here is that the Bible said there was a certain rich man, which means he's not, he's not making this story up. There's, there was actually this guy existed. There was a certain rich man, a particular one, a specific man, a certain rich man, and he said he was clothed in purple and fine linen, fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar. And then, this is interesting, he said there was a certain beggar, and he gave the name. This beggar's name. So we're not talking about some made-up fable. We are actually referring to two certain people, very specific situation, as he begins to give us insight on this. And then he said, and, and, the, and the beggar's name was Lazarus, which laid at his gate full of sores. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover, the dogs came and they licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died. His name is what? Lazarus. The beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosoms. Now, this is very interesting. Remember, this is a situation that took place before Jesus uh, was born and before Jesus had died. And you've got to understand what happened. The, the hell was divided up into two compartments. And between 
the bottom part and the top part was this great gulf, which kept people from crossing over. And so the upper regions of hell was referred to as Abraham's bosoms. This is the place where all of those who were in covenant with God were there until Jesus came to set the captives free. All right. Okay, so on the other side or the lower part of, of uh, hell was where, uh, you know, wicked men, uh, men who were not in covenant or didn't believe God, it's where they, they went. Okay. All right, now, so now you understand here when he said uh, that he died and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosoms. The rich man also died and was buried and in hell. The rich man died, was buried, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. Now, I want you to count the number of times the word torment appears. He lifted up his eyes, being in torment. He seeth, and notice the senses that were working. Both of these guys are dead. But when you die, your physical body stays on the, on, on, goes back to the dust of the ground of the earth, but your spirit and soul goes with you wherever you are. If your soul didn't go, you wouldn't be able to recognize people. Your spirit and your soul. All right, now watch this. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus, in his bosoms, he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. <laughs> the nerve of this guy. And send Lazarus <laughs> that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Now, that, that, Lazarus ain't doing that no more. <laughs> For I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime, so life is over, they're now in eternity. Remember in thy lifetime, receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from hence. And then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. So he was just saying like, look, dude, just, you know, somebody go and tell them this is all real. You know, I didn't know this was all real, but now I'm here. I need somebody to go.